Now today we're talking about a MAP or a Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. Very, very quickly, this little sensor is obtaining a pressure reading, converts that into an electrical signal, and sends it to the vehicle's computer. Now P107 is a low voltage or a low pressure reading. P108 is a high pressure or a high voltage reading. Ultimately, there's two ways you can see what's going on here. Let me show you the first way, which is by far the fastest way to diagnose what's going on. Now this first technique is using a scan tool. If you don't have a scan tool, a lot of times you can go to your local auto parts store and they will plug in a scan tool, but you need something that can read live data. That's the key. See if they're willing to show you live data, which I don't see why it would be a problem. Other option is just to purchase one on your own. This is $40 off Amazon. I'll, I'll include a link directly uh, to Amazon if you're needing a scan tool. So we'll plug this into the vehicle and we want to do a live stream. Now if this is the first time you're really doing anything on your vehicle, you're unfamiliar with these scan tools, they all have the same ends. Since 1996 and newer vehicles, every vehicle has the same end. It's a federal guideline and all that you're doing is plugging this into the vehicle's computer essentially. Now, where is that located? On this TL, it's on the driver's side. Let me turn on a light, and right under here, right there, that's where you plug it in. Okay, now let's start the vehicle. Okay, so as you can see, you have a number of different options, but we want diagnose. You hit OK, and let this just uh, spool up here. Now once this loads, you just want to go down, just so you can see how I'm doing this, to data stream. And in this case, we'll do select items. And we want to find the menu for the manifold absolute pressure sensor. So let me just scroll down here. So as you can see, you can really do a lot of cool stuff and you can graph it on this as well. But here it is, intake manifold absolute pressure that's the one we want and then on this scan tool you just hit this back arrow and there you go there's your pressure reading now on P107 if you see a reading here of 3 or anything below 3 kilopascals then you have to replace the sensor that's it you're done if you see P108 and this reading is over 160 kilopascals that's it so you can quickly within 30 seconds see what's going on with a scan tool, replace it, and then you have to do something known as an idle memory, which I'll show you at the end. But now let's say that you're in a bind, it's Sunday night, all the stores are closed, you don't have a scan tool. How can you test the sensor without the scan tool? It's a little bit more involved, but I'll show you on how you can do that. Now fortunately, the MAP sensor is very easy to get to. Of course, here's the engine, this is the throttle body, and right here is where the sensor is located. Now in my case, I don't have a problem. As you just saw with that reading from the scan tool, I'm just doing this as a how-to. But that being said, all that we're going to do is disconnect the harness connector. Now what we want to do is obtain a voltage reading. In other, in other words, we want to verify that power is getting to the sensor. So we're going to turn on the ignition key. You won't start the vehicle. Just turn on the ignition key and we should see five volts worth of power. Now to do that we need a multimeter. Let me go grab one. So this is a digital multimeter. This costs $20 from Amazon. You can do a number of different tests not only on your vehicle but also uh, for your house. A absolute must-have if you plan on doing your own auto repair. This, a scan tool and a multimeter are my opinion the most the two most important tools that you must have really uh, on a modern vehicle but that being said take a look at the harness connector you have an, you have three prongs here now in our case what we want to do is again take a voltage reading but they're so small if you take a look the multimeter comes with two leads a red and a black lead but look how tight this is it's very very hard to get a, t a good reading here so what I tend to do is use a paper clip now on your vehicle, you may have to just trial and error in terms of which two wires, because we need to touch two wires here, which two wires to touch. But typically, look for the red wire. This happens to be red and yellow, and I know that is our power wire. And I'll show you very quickly on how you can just sort of trial and error this. 
So I'm just taking the paper clip and inserting it into the harness connector. Again, turn on the ignition key. I'll zoom out here. And we should see five volts. So on the multimeter, you have volts. You want the DC reading, okay? You don't, make sure it doesn't say AC. That's for your household current. You want DC. Now to make this simpler, I'm just taking these two leads. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit more. I'm pretty much maxed out here, but let's do this. Now you don't want to cross the leads, of course. Just be careful when you do this. We just take in the leads. I tend to use these alligator clips because it makes the job easier, especially when filming. It makes it much, much easier as opposed to holding the leads to the paper clip. So again, we're just verifying that power is getting here. And we should see five volts worth of power. And we do. So that verifies that power is getting to this harness connector. Now, if you don't see a reading here, then you have a break from this wire to the vehicle's computer. It could be the PCM, which is the power control uh, module. But nonetheless, you most likely won't have a problem here on a modern vehicle. The wiring tends to be quite excellent. But let's say you're not sure which wires to touch. If I just remove this one, as you can see, there goes away the reading, and touch the middle one, you don't have anything, okay? Now, I'm not sure if you could see that. On the multimeter, it's reading in millivolts. That's a very, very, very small amount of power. But once we touch this one, it's a volt reading. Let me just zoom in. I'm not sure if you guys can pick that up. So again, volts. But if I disconnect this, take a look here. It's a millivolt reading. So that's it. You could do a trial and error. But again, you just want to see 5 volts worth of power. Now the last test is just obtaining a voltage reading while the vehicle is running. Now how do you do that? Well, take a look again at the harness connector. And in the back you have, we want to get access, let me zoom in here. You want to get access to, I'm not sure if you could pick that up, but you have these metal prongs again inside the body of the harness connector. We need to get access to this, but this has to be plugged in. Let me zoom back out. This has to be plugged in, obviously, so we can start the car and let it run. So what we're going to do is on the reverse side, you have these these, uh, let me zoom back in, you have these weather packs essentially, they're just these rubber grommets that go around the harness connected to protect uh, weather resist essentially the prongs inside the body of the harness connector, but we need to bypass that. So again, just taking a uh, paper clip and I'm going to push it in and you'll feel it when it slides through that, that weather pack. Now just be gentle, you don't want to rip that weather pack. Just slightly push through. I have to do it a little bit more. I just want to quickly show you what we're going to do here. So one paper clip will, will go here with the power wire, and then the other one will go here. Now you don't want to cross these while the car's running. You can kill the sensor, hurt the, the car's computer. So you want to be careful when you do this, obviously. But one will go here on the left, the other one will go on the right. Now again, you could do this through trial and error. I did a separate video showing on how you can test the power, the ground, and the service line. But nonetheless, just to quickly show you on how you do this, one paper clip left, another one right here on the right. Plug this back in to the sensor, start the vehicle, and we'll take a voltage reading. So I have my paper clips inserted. Plug this back in. Now again, I'm going to use the leads coming from the multimeter. And again, use the alligator clips. Absolute huge. Makes the job so much easier. One will go here. The other one will go here. Now, P107, you should see voltage. Again, you want volts DC. Make sure it says DC on the multimeter. P107 typically is under 0 0.4, 0 0.3 volts. And P108 is 4.4, 4.5 volts and above. Okay, so if you see any of those uh, ranges, then you know the sensor is no good. So let's start the vehicle. As you can see, we're at roughly four volts, so this is working perfectly fine, this uh, sensor. But that's how you can quickly test the sensor and verify that you have a problem. Sometimes you need to do this, especially if you have multiple engine codes. You have to start dicing out which one's really working right and not right. This is a way you can really do it at home. Quite easy to do. Just be careful when you set everything up. Again, you don't want to cross these lines. 
Now, if you do need to replace the sensor, it's easy enough. And fortunately, on this vehicle, it's not too expensive. A new one is roughly $50. We did one on a Subaru last year, and it was $300. So, uh, you know, they can be quite pricey, but on this Acura TL, not too bad. But that being said, the thing you want to be careful, a lot of times these are attached with these Phillips size fasteners. Get a very, very good screwdriver, nothing cheap. And then you want to press down. Whoops. Press down. I have all my weight on this, and I'm moving this, okay? With a lot of might. So make sure you put a lot of pressure on this because you don't want to strip this out. Then once you remove the fastener, you just pull this out, replace it with a new sensor, and then you have to do an idle memory reset. Let me show you on how you can do that. Now the idle learn procedure is quite simple. Make sure everything is off, the rear defroster, the blower motor, the lights, the radio, everything is completely off. You'll start the vehicle and then you just, you just want to hold the RPMs at 3000 RPMs until the radiator fan kicks on, okay? And then once the fan kicks on, then just let it idle for five minutes and you'll be fine. Now, if you don't do this, you can typically still drive the vehicle, but you may have very, very low uh, RPMs at idle. Sometimes it may feel like the car will stall. So it's a, always a good idea just to do this. It's simple enough. So again, you just hold it at 3000. And then once the radiator fan kicks on, just let it idle for five minutes and you'll be perfectly fine. The flip side that some people do is they'll turn on the air conditioner while the vehicle is idling for five, 10 minutes. And that also works, but nonetheless, it's a, always a good idea just to do this procedure. Okay, so that's all it takes to test and replace one of these sensors. As you can see, it's quite simple. Having that scan tool makes all the difference in the world. Invest in a scan tool and a multimeter. It will save you thousands and thousands of dollars over the long run. I kid you not. I have not been to a mechanic in well over 20 years since I was in high school and you will save a bundle of money. So that being said, make sure you also delete that code. With the scan tool, you can erase the code, do the idle reset, your car will be running fantastic and you'll be in good shape. We will continue to uh, upload videos regarding the Acura TL. We have a playlist, so if you do have a TL, check out that playlist. We have HID replacement, all the bulbs, cross member replacement, uh, power steering wine, uh, transmission flush, oil change, all that good stuff. So just check it out if you want. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.